Hey guys, welcome back. So today in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys uh, the basics on reverse engineering iOS apps and runtime modification. So if you don't know what that is, uh, basically reverse engineering is uh, disassembling the app and finding out its methods and how it works. And then runtime modification is actually patching methods and writing your own code into the app while it's running. Uh, so it's quite useful for a few different things, one of them being um, patching methods that uh, would stop you using an app if you're jailbroken. So I know there are, there are a few apps that have a jailbreak detection on them and they will not let you use the app unless um, you use some patches and uh, this is basically how you make the patches. Um, but you can also just use it just to find out how the app works or just to mess around. Um, and a lot of people also use it actually for making tweaks so you can play around with the tweaks before you actually um, write a mobile substrate extension for it. So you will need uh, a computer uh, with a couple programs you're going to need. Um, you'll need Terminal which obviously is installed already on the Mac. Uh, you'll also need Hopper and I'm using the trial version of it, Hopper Disassembler v3. Uh, this is a disassembler tool and uh, I think that's pretty much it but you'll need a couple things on the device so you also need a test device. Now you can do this on your main phone, this all, this all works on iOS 9 and everything like that but uh, I'm just going to be doing it on my iPhone 4 uh, just in case I mess up anything but yeah so I'll quickly show you guys what to install on your uh, test device. Alright so my test device for this video is my iPhone 4 and this is jailbroken with Pangu on 7.1.2 so you will need jailbreak obviously to do this so first of all go into Cydia and you're going to install three things OpenSSH, uh, this one right here Clutch and this one is only needed if you're going to be uh, reverse engineering some App Store apps and you'll need SciCrypt or Script this one right here Alright, so you guys can see my iPhone 4 on the screen right now. So first of all, I'll start by showing you guys the basics of SciCrypt. So what this is, is a tool that lets you inject your own code into an iOS app while it's running. So to use it, we're going to go into Terminal on the Mac, and we're going to open up an, SS, uh, an SSH connection. So to do this, you want to type SSH root at 192, or whatever your IP address is. So to find your IP, go to um, the settings app on your device and go to the Wi-Fi click on the little I next to it and you'll see your IP so this is the IP for my iPhone 4 and enter and then type in the default password which is Alpine A-L-P-I-N-E and enter uh, sorry wrong password so now you're in uh, if you've changed your password or obviously used whatever password you've changed it to Alright, so we're now in the device, so we can now send commands and completely control it. So, first of all, I won't be showing you guys um, injecting any apps at the moment, we'll just be using Springboard, which does really count as an app, so we can just inject uh, our own code into the Springboard. So we need to run SciCrypt, so do SciCrypt-P for process. Now here you can even put the, either put the process uh, number uh, or the name if you know the name so springboard is just springboard like that enter and you'll see this little cy hashtag and this means you're in so we're now hooked into springboard and we can run our own commands so to start uh, if you run ui app this gives you this hex number here and obviously Springboard, so this confirms we are in Springboard. So I'll quickly show you a couple of things that I've found uh, quite fun to play around with with Springboard. So if you do uiapp.keywindow.recursive description, enter, this shows you a list of all the current views loaded by the Springboard. So as you can see, there's quite a lot here. And if we go right to the top, we've got SB app window, followed by a hex number. And we've got quite a lot of stuff here. So what you can do is, basically SciCrypt works, but it's like a, um, a bridge between Objective-C and JavaScript. So we can create some JavaScript variables that use these hex numbers. And then we can actually modify stuff on 
uh, the springboard. So let's find one that uh, I've done before. So uh, this, uh, where is it? SB icon content view. So you see right here. So if we copy this hex number and now go down here and we're going to create a new variable. So do var a equals new uh, instance, open bracket, paste the hex number, close bracket. And now we have this variable SB icon content view. So we can do something like a dot hidden equals yes. So just do your objective C code. And as you can see there, the springboard has pretty much disappeared apart from the wallpaper. So you guys are seeing this in real time uh, in, the bottom, in the bottom corner. So yeah, that is one of the things you can mess around with. And you can make it come back, a dot hidden equals no. As you guys can see, it's back. Uh, you can do other things as well, like set the alpha. So a dot alpha equals 0 0.5. As you can see, it sort of dimmed the screen. I'm going to move this over a little bit so you guys can see the iPhone 4 a bit better. Um, so let's just put that back up. Uh, you can set a background color on it as well. So a dot background color equals UI color. And you can choose any UI color. So let's just do green color. As you guys can see, the background wallpaper has turned green. Um, I'm not really sure why I didn't change the dot green, but it's a bit weird. But yeah, so you guys get the idea of SciCrypt. That's pretty much how you use it. Um, you can do other things as well, like set the text on some labels if you find any labels. Uh, let's see if we've got any other interesting stuff right here. Um, SB icon view, we'll play around with this one. So copy the hex number for SB icon view. I think there are a lot of SB icon views, one for each icon loaded. So I don't, I'm not sure what this one is going to be. So let's just do var b equals new. Uh, instance. All right, so let's just try and hide this and see which icon it is. All right, so you guys can see it was Safari. Safari just got hidden. Um, so let's unhide that. Um, so you can obviously set the alpha on individual icons. Uh, sorry, not hidden. Alpha equals 0 0.3. As you can see, Safari dimmed and nothing else did. So yeah, that is pretty much how you use Cycrypt. So now I'm going to show you guys how to actually inject it into uh, a regular iOS app, not Springboard, and actually do some cool things with it. All right, so as you can see here, uh, sitting on my desktop, I have two files. I have a Twitter IPA, and I have uh, preferences executable from the preferences.app. On iOS so I'm gonna be showing you first of all messing around with the preferences app now keep in mind that system applications and App Store applications are different because system system ones do not have an encryption uh, App Store ones do they're encrypted differently for each device so you have to decrypt it before you can actually do anything with it like reverse engineering I'll show you that guys I'll show you that in a minute so we'll leave the Twitter IP over here so preferences is already decrypted because it's a system app so what we're going to do is I'm going to open up the settings app on the phone and uh, we'll just leave that there and we'll do stuff with that in a minute. So first of all we're going to go into Hopper and I'm going to try the demo and we're going to drag in the preferences executable into the middle and then leave this at the top on Macho ARMv7, click OK and it's going to reverse engineer. So you'll see we get some ARM assembly here and on the side we get labels and strings. So this is where this comes in handy. The labels, these are all the methods and the view controllers used by the settings app. So uh, you could do this by class dumping it and you'll find the same information but this is a bit easier because you can just quickly drag it in. So uh, yeah, here are all the view controllers. As you can see here we've got PS Touch ID passcode controller so that is the passcode um, controller or passcode button on the settings app so you can find your methods here and I'm going to be showing you guys how to change the root view controller of the settings app so the root view controller is the controller that the settings app loads up first when it's launched so by default it is set to this settings controller right here 
uh, but you can actually change that to whatever you want as long as you know the name of it. So we're going to go and open up Terminal again and let's do this. So I'm going to SSH back into the device. All right, so we're going to run SciCrypt again, this time on preferences. And we should be in. There we go. So to change the root view controller to a different controller, we need to know a different controller first. So let's find one. If we go to uh, date time controller, as you can see here. So if we just copy that exact name, just remember that. We can change. So we do UI app dot key window uh, dot root view controller equals and we do two square brackets the exact name of that controller so date time controller alloc close the first square bracket in it close the second uh, square bracket and then when we enter this as you guys can see it has changed uh, the default controller to the date and time controller so quickly show you guys on the device there's no back button because this is now the home of the settings app so you can modify the settings here but there's no way to get back unless you actually change it so you guys might be wondering what is this useful for well such apps that bypass that they, sorry that stop you getting in unless you have a non jailbroken device you can simply change the root view of it to the view you want to get into and it will skip the jailbreak detection basically so that is one of the uses of this. Um, so I'll quickly show you another example. Let's find another. Uh, so here is actually the root view controller. So if you want to change it back, you can just set it to prefs root controller. Um, let's find another one. So the reset pref controller. Let's try that. So let's copy this code at the top. So UI app .key window root view controller equals and this is reset uh, so type it just like that and enter and as you guys can see it's now set the reset controller as the uh, home view of the, uh, the settings app so there's no back button just the reset options so yeah that is pretty much how you uh, change the root view controller so now I'll show you guys how to do it with Twitter, which you'll first need to decrypt because it is an App Store installed application. So here is where Clutch comes into play. You will need to do this on the device, or you can actually SSH into it again, but um, I'll just be doing it in mobile terminal. So you want to have the application installed. So here it is, Twitter. And as you guys can see, I have not signed up. I've just left it on the login screen. So there you go, welcome to Twitter. So you want to go into mobile terminal, type in clutch and return, and it's going to tell you a list of all the applications that are encrypted. So as you can see, only one, which is Twitter. So you just type the command again, clutch space Twitter. It be exactly how you see it there, like that. Return and it will basically crack Twitter and put it into a directory. So this can take a little while depending on how big the app is. So yes, I did already have this IPA here before because I did it before recording the video. But uh, now that you know how to do it, you basically email this to yourself or transfer it over AFC or AFCD and you now have this new IPA. So this is a cracked version which is completely decrypted and you're ready to reverse engineer it. So first of all, we need to actually get to the executable from the IPA. So change the format to zip. Use zip and then extract this, and you'll have a payload folder. Uh, or in here, you have a payload folder. So go in here. Now, here's the dot app for Twitter. Right click, show package contents, and find the Twitter executable, which is right here. Drag this to your desktop. And this is what you want to reverse engineer. So let's get rid of these. So open up Hopper again, and we're going to drag Twitter into here and same settings as before, just click OK and it's going to load this Twitter is a bit bigger than this settings app so it might take a little longer 
and I'm going to get ready with this again. So, all right, so here we are. We are inside the Twitter app, and you can see here we have the new labels, which is t something like TL timeline factory entry. Um, so, yeah, let's go SSH back into the device. And run SciCrypt on Twitter. And we're in. So you guys can now see on the screen that my Twitter app is open on my phone. So we're basically going to change the root view to one of the other views so we don't have to basically sign in. Uh, so you can't actually, this is a pretty pointless example really, but you can't, because you can't actually use Twitter unless you're signed in. But it's just sort of an example showing how you can get past the login screen. So same code as before, UI app dot key window dot uh, root view controller equals open square brackets. So now we're going to find a view controller that we want to use. So in the labels section, scroll down until you see something that you want to use. Um, all right, so this one right here, TL main view controller. Uh, I think that is going to be the the main um, the tab bar controller that you normally see when you log in when you're already logged into Twitter. So we're going to do that one. So let's quickly put my iPhone 4 is now on the screen. So we're going to put in T1 main view controller alloc in it, and I think that's right. And there, so. As you guys can see with Twitter, it doesn't really work too well. It just gives you on like sort of a black screen with a white tab bar at the bottom. Um, that is just because you're not actually logged in, so it's got no data to display. But this would work in another app um, that just has a jailbreak detection screen. Uh, you'd be able to get past that using this. So yeah, that is the basics of reverse engineering iOS apps. Hope you guys found this video useful. Uh, please leave a like if you did. And yeah, so thanks for watching guys. Please subscribe for more. And I will see you in the next video.